tonight on GTTV. We're here at Valve in Seattle, the creators of Half-Life and Left 4 Dead, and we've got the latest breaking news on the mind-twisting puzzles of Portal 2 and the game's co-op campaign. Then, Left 4 Dead isn't over yet, and we've got the scoop on The Sacrifice. Plus, we review Madden NFL 11, and Daniel Kaiser talks to Ken Levine about Bioshock Infinite. Grab your portal gun. GTTV starts right now. Welcome to an all-new Game Trailers TV. I'm Jeff Keeley up here in Seattle at Valve to take you inside the world of Portal 2, one of the most anticipated games that's coming out in 2011. And I'm here right now with Eric Wolpaw, who is writing this game. Eric, you wrote the first Portal. Uh, what is new in Portal 2? Uh, well, there's a bunch of new stuff. Uh, Where to start? Yeah. I, We're still at Aperture Science for some of the games. Yeah, so... Stuff that isn't new. You're still at Aperture Science, uh, but you're exploring a whole bunch of new parts of Aperture Science. Uh, we've got new characters, uh, new story line, and uh, potentially the biggest thing is a fully blown out co-op mode that's okay. as big as the single player mode and also has a, uh, a kind of story going to it. The single player campaigns a little bit more than twice as long as the single player campaign in Portal 1, and then the co-op campaign is that length again. And there's a whole new feature in Portal 2, which you haven't talked about, which is the gels. There's a whole bunch of new puzzle elements. Uh, one of them, the one you're mentioning, is gel, which is this sort of liquid... Uh, no, it's a gel that has these properties. Sort of gel. Yeah, different ones have... Hey, is a gel actually liquid? I, I guess actually, it is liquid. It's a good question. Yeah, it's not a solid. But, it's not a solid. So, uh, for instance, there's a propulsion gel, which you can put it down on a surface, and it'll make you go faster across the surface. Right there, there's right. a bounce gel, which uh, you put it down on a surface, and it'll let you kind of bounce around on it. And also, you can coat other objects, like cubes or turrets, with it, and the turrets will bounce around, or the uh, cubes, anything you... And you other undisclosed off. gels, I bet, right? Uh, yes. And you're going to use these, to obviously, as modifiers in these test chambers. Right, so... Uh, you know, between the gels and there's uh, some light bridges, uh, which are these extendable laser bridges. bridges right? Yeah, like yeah. laser bridges. There's uh, these sort of funnels that you can use to redirect through portals that things sort of float through them so you can float things across things. Hey, hey lady, over here. Oh, good, you're back. I thought maybe you'd try to escape without me. There's also, though, these personality spheres, right? Right, there's the personality Wheatley, spheres. who we saw for the first time in E3, right? Yeah, uh, Wheatley is the first character you meet Doesn't he, he awakens Chell, right, from the stasis? He awakens Chell uh, from the stasis, and the two of you are kind of trying to escape together, and then kind of one thing leads to another, and you end he up... He screws up, and he awakens GLaDOS. He awakens GLaDOS, and uh, then GLaDOS kind of has you guys again. Oh, you've got to be joking. Okay, new plan. Wheelie at E3, we heard him with a, a programmer's voice. Actually, an animator's voice. An animator's voice, I'm sorry, but a Valve employee. Valve voice. employee's voice. And, and people online are petitioning, saying this voice is great, don't change it. And now you're telling us you're going to change it, right? Well, we are we are changing it. I mean, he's a he is a temp voice actor. Did a great job, but also, I mean, good animator. Have you seen the petitions online? Yeah, I haven't actually seen the petitions, but I, you're probably making that up. But <laughs> there are petitions. No. I'll show you. Okay, after we do this. But sure. the um, so we actually we have Stephen Merchant, who is um, from Extras. He's Ricky Gervais's writing partner, and he was in the Office, the British Office, and uh, and Extras. That's and, a big upgrade. Well, I don't know. I'm going to. Uh, the animator did the voice. I don't want to. How does he feel uh, about that? Rich, Stephen Merchant or uh, oh, the animator? I'm sure he's fine with it. You know, I didn't ask. We don't talk. Okay, it's over. <laughs> yeah, this looks dangerous. I'll hold the light steady. Oh, actually, done. While a lot of core players chide the Madden series for its yearly updates and the casual players it attracts, those who actually play it every year know that few games are as complicated or as intricate. EA Sports has apparently realized this because Madden NFL 11 is all about streamlining the experience to make it as accessible as possible. The result is a game that feels fresher than it has in years.
the big new feature this year is the game flow system, which makes it so that with your ongoing input, the computer can call plays for you. It takes some tweaking and a bit of trial and error to get it working perfectly, but the end result is precisely what was promised, shorter games. The ultimate team feature that launched as DLC for last year's game is back, and the collection process is as addictive as ever. Meanwhile, the co-op game has seen a meaningful addition with online team play, which allows up to three players to occupy key positions on each side of the field. He's got it! Touchdown! Factor in the great running and tackling mechanics, and you have a product that's worth its full asking price. If you haven't snatched up a copy on opening day for a while, Madden NFL 11 answers the bell. Touchdown. We give Madden NFL 11 a 9.1. After the break, we learn more about the co-op campaign in Portal 2, and later in the show, we reveal what's next for Left 4 Dead. Hey, we're back here on Game Trailers TV at Valve looking at Portal 2, and I'm here with Eric, who's the writer of the game. Now, Eric... Portal 2 is not just a single-player campaign. You guys are doing a complete co-op experience for you and your buddy with a totally new storyline, right? Yeah, completely new storyline uh, as long as the single-player game and uh, a whole brand new set of puzzles. Now, you have these, these two characters. I know at PAX, uh, coming up in September, you guys are going to be talking a little bit more about the story, but tonight you're going to tell us a little bit of a preview of sort of what their journey is all about. Yeah, it's kind of um, GLaDOS is, builds these two robots to try and cut humans out of the loop because, I mean, history has proven they're kind of trouble when it comes it right was. down to it. Yeah, and, and not super bright. So the robots, she's putting them through these tests, and it's her, this kind of one robot, putting these other two robots through the tests, and she realizes that there's some, it's sort of a quantum mechanical Schrodinger's cat sort of thing going on where you need a human observer for the test to actually mean anything. Okay. So she's kind of stuck and she needs to uh, find a way for these robots to become more human-like to the point where they're human enough that these tests, you know, that you can derive some results from the test. Uh -huh. So she sort of puts them through some training tests and then sends them off into the bowels of Aperture, sort of on these archaeological digs to find human relics to try and uh, teach them all, you know, how to, how to love, how to be... A human know. relic? So what, what do you mean? Well, you know, Bones, like a body? No, world's number one dad mug or, yeah. you know... Garfield cartoon that everybody was laughing about. Humans, oh, love them. You take these relics and then they, would there be memories that would sort of explode out of picking up these relics? There, that's That would be a good idea if that happened. Exactly. But right. things like that might happen. You know, in ways you're trying to, they're, they're going to puzzle over them and try and derive some some information some from them. meaning out of those. Yeah, some meaning out of those that could lead these two robots to being uh, human enough to sort of pass a, a modified version of the Turing test, at which point they're able to uh, get some results from them. You know, what I like about it is it's not just co-op through the same test chambers as the single player. No, it's you not. Know, it's a completely different It's experience. completely different. And, you know, again, yeah, if we could get away with it, yeah, the exact same damn chambers. But uh, the problem... Valve doesn't cut corners. No, no, that. no cutting corners. If I could get away, if I was in charge. Right. But the thing is, it, the co-op experience is completely, from a puzzle design standpoint, it's just different. Having four portals changes everything. No, None of the single player chambers would work right. in co-op because if somebody discovers a way to solve a chamber, Chamber using just one set of portals, yep. then the chamber's broken. It's kind of back to the drawing board on it. There's going to be the co-op campaign that you guys are going to talk a bit more about at PAX, but right now we're going to take a little sneak preview of uh, what the story is between these two robots. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to be looking at. Check it out. Chamber completed. Hey 
this is Daniel Kaiser for GTTV, once again discussing the science of video games with Dr. Michio Kako. Thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be on. Today we're discussing the PlayStation 3 exclusive Infamous, which is a series on Sony's console that introduces Cole, a character who is at the epicenter of this huge explosion and somehow gains the ability to have superpowers to interact with electricity. Talk a little bit about man's ability to manipulate weather. Well, right now we can't manipulate the weather at all. Uh, the CIA, uh, during the Vietnam War, tried to manipulate the weather by creating thunderstorms during monsoon season in order to drown out the Viet Cong. Uh, that was a failure. Many governments have tried to use silver iodide crystals to see the weather. It's very, very spotty success record. Basically, Mother Nature has still the last laugh when it comes to the weather. So in your professional opinion, out of all the things we talk about on the science of games, manipulating weather is probably the most far-fetched? Uh, in some sense, yeah, we could talk about time machines, we could talk about wormholes, there's a theory behind it, but there's no theory behind how you can manipulate the, the geologic forces around us. All right, well, it sounds like you'll have to do it as coal for the time being, but we appreciate your insight as always. For the latest on Infamous and all your favorite video game franchises, just head on over to GameTrailers.com. Coming up next, Ken Levine and Daniel Kaiser visit the floating city of Columbia to discuss Bioshock Infinite. Plus, more Portal 2 info, and later we check out the new Left 4 Dead DLC. We can walk anywhere we want! This is amazing! Hey guys, we're back here on Game Trailers TV at Valve looking at Portal 2, and I'm here with Eric, who's the project manager on the game. Now at E3, Valve promised a big Portal 2 surprise. And the surprise was that you're bringing the game not just to Xbox 360, but also PlayStation 3? Yeah, and on top of that, we're bringing Steam to okay. PS3. So for us, Sony had this very open approach to software developers, which is kind of the way that we look at building software also. You know, we feel like with Steam and Portal 2 on the PS3, that that version is going to be the best console version that we ship. We'll be able to update our customers. Uh, our customers will, will kind of have the experience that we want customers that buy Valve products to have. Now, this is a big change for Valve because you guys have been off the PlayStation 3 for a number of years. Mm -hmm. you know, Gabe Newell has said pretty publicly that uh, you know the PS3 is a disaster, to, to paraphrase. Um, so, I mean, is the game actually going to you know, play at a good frame rate, you know, look great on PS3? Absolutely. You know, we're, we're in the middle of working on the product right now. Right. The PS3 team themselves have been great to deal with. They were just up in the office about a week ago. We understand the technology a lot better. You're passing you know? the lemon cake to each other. <laughs> well, you know, they actually, they've been a really great partner for us. Okay. Uh, and we're, it's a we're big really change, happy. right? Uh, it, you know, it's a change from years ago, but right. uh, this is the first product that we've been building ourselves in-house. And, I, you know, I think that we kind of ha have our heads wrapped around it better, and, and Steam is the thing that, that really puts it over the top for us. That's exciting. So Steam will be not... Not all of Steam will be on PS3, but Steam will be sort of inside. Steam Works will be in Portal 2. Yeah, and we're still trying to figure out exactly everything about Steam right. uh, that will be in the title. But surely, you know, we'll be able to update our customers, which for us is the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, being able to see your friends and things like that. And so we're we're still kind of working that out, but it hasn't. We haven't really had any problems on the business side. Yeah. Um, it's just a bunch of work that we have to do to you know get it all done. We potentially let people uh, play cross-platform between PC and PS3. We would like to do that. Absolutely. It'd be cool to you know co-op or something. Yep. Have your friend on PC you on PS3. Yep. So not confirmed yet, but something you're looking. Oh, uh, it's doing. something we definitely want to do. Awesome. All right. Well, we will stay tuned on that. Now, Valve's been in this interesting rhythm, you know, over the past few years, releasing a game, and I guess this year, you know, Portal is not coming this year, but it's it's coming very early next year, right? Yeah. I mean, it's we've been busy. February 9th, you announced this the date, right? February 9th on all so, platforms. The Valve fans are going to be shocked. You're actually putting a stake in the ground saying <laughs> February 9th is our date. This is not going to slip? Uh, no, it's, we're, we're not thinking it's going to slip. Wow. All right, going to be ready to go. We've been pretty good the last couple years with our dates. Once we That's put true. the stake in the ground. What's up? This is Daniel Kaiser here in New York City at an exclusive event where Irrational is getting ready to unveil their brand new game. I've got an exclusive all-access pass, and I'm taking you along for the ride. So thanks for coming tonight. Without further ado, I'm happy to introduce you to the world premiere trailer of Irrational Games' newest project.
everyone. I'm joined now by Ken Levine, who must be relieved at the moment after the big reveal, the big announcement. Tell us how you're feeling right now, Ken. I feel really good. It's, um, you know, there's there's so much work that goes into these things, but the most important thing is we can actually talk about the game, because people have been asking after so long, what are you guys working on? It's, it's hard not to answer that question, because you want to tell people, because you're so excited about it. Tell us about the venue and the unveiling of the game itself. Well, the, um, the, we set up the room that it would be sort of like a black box theater space. And we're in the Plaza Hotel. For those who don't know, it's this grand old hotel in New York, a turn of the century hotel, which is sort of a bit of a hint about this or the period of the game is. We wanted people not to do anything about the game until they saw the, you know, the trailer. And then after, you know, we showed the demo, we, um, we had black curtains all around the room and those dropped and revealed sort of a setup of the room here, which is, to, is designed to look like the city of Columbia. Very interesting way to do it. And the game itself, tell us about Bioshock Infinite. You know, for us, us, um, Bioshock was always about more than just a city, more than just about Rapture. Of course, we love Rapture. We created Rapture. We had a lot of things left to say about it. We didn't have a lot left to say about that particular city. So we had this idea, what if we had a completely different story, a completely different time period, and take it from there. And nothing was put in this game just because it was in a previous game. It's an entirely new engine. Um, there's not a shared piece of content. It's a totally fresh start, but it's also very much for us a Bioshock game. Well, if you thought you were going back to Rapture, I guess you were proven wrong. But that's okay. You can check out extended cuts of our interviews from here tonight and the very latest on Bioshock Infinite right now over at GameTrailers.com. I'm Daniel Kaiser. Good night from New York. Reloading. When we return, we get a first look at what's next for Left 4 Dead and give you a sneak peek at the Left 4 Dead digital comic book. here on Game Trailers TV at the brand new lobby of Valve's brand new office and I'm here with Chet from Left 4 Dead. Chet, this show is supposed to be about Portal. What, what are you doing here, CrowdNet? Yeah. We're just going to sneak a little Left 4 Dead 2 in for you. Left 4 Dead keeps going? Left 4 Dead keeps going. Left 4 Dead 1 and Left 4 Dead 2. Alright, well Left 4 Dead 2, you had uh, the passing earlier this year which uh, you guys have talked about on the show with that tagline where someone was going to die, right? Correct. Now, and what's next? True to form, Bill did die. But you don't know how he died. And so now we have the sacrifice. And you get to learn how Bill dies. And that's going to come up for Left 4 Dead 1 right. and Left 4 Dead 2. Because we thought if ah. you played the passing in Left 4 Dead 2 and you want to see what happened to lead up to this, we don't want to make you have to go buy Left 4 Dead 1. We want to be able to give it to you in DLC as well. And once we're going to convert the characters over into that, we might as well give you everybody's favorite No Mercy from Left 4 Dead 1. So you'll actually get No Mercy and the sacrifice in the same DLC. You'll get to play as Zoe. She'll fight a charger. You'll get to play as Bill. Okay. So it will be a slightly different experience if you have Left 4 Dead 1 or Left 4 Dead 2? Correct. And not only that, also Mac users now can play. Wow, you're so just rolling out with the, the news time. today. Going crazy. Right. Get ready, ladies! Now, Chet, what is the, the setup and the storyline for The Sacrifice? Well, so we're actually going to go into detail here. So, because we have a 150-plus page comic coming out beforehand. Digital comic, Digital right? comic, right. and it's drawn by uh, Mike Oming from Powers fame. Okay. And, uh, and he's on staff here at Valve, though. He's on staff here. Right. So we work with him really closely on it. It's a great comic. And we'll start releasing it in September. Okay. And it's going to lead up and tell you everything that happened with the Left 4 Dead 1 survivors. 150 pages. So you're going to put it out page by page? Or are you going to put four it Four parts. Four parts. Four parts. So we're going to break it up into four parts. Uh -huh. And each go also goes into the backstory of each of the Left 4 Dead 1 survivors. Okay. Interesting. So you get a little insight there. And you get a little insight what's going on in their world. Okay. And you'll end up at the sacrifice. Okay. And then you'll see the perfect way it can play out. And then you'll get to play the DLC where you get to play it how it plays out for you. Oh, I see. So the comic tells sort of one version of what could have happened? Yeah, so um, just something that happens at the finale. Uh -huh. and, and does Bill we, survive oh, in the Sacrifice comic? In the Sacrifice comic, Bill does not survive. Uh, this is going to get bad. But in the game, you can choose who uh, survives. You can choose? Yeah, so the players are going to get a bit to choose and mix it up because... Who knows, you know, maybe Lewis wants to stand up and, you know, save the crowd there. Oh, I, that's interesting. So it's not predetermined who's going to die at the end of sacrifice in the game. Uh, for Left 4 Dead, it's all about always on-the-fly kind of strategies, on-the-fly excitement and storytelling. And so we wanted to leave that open for the players to choose how they want to do it. I'm reloading. This uh, Sacrifice DLC is going to be uh, probably free for folks on uh, PC and Mac, I guess, and then cost a little bit of money on Xbox? Correct. And it'll be for Left 4 Dead 1 and Left 4 Dead 2. 
All right, so Left 4 Dead keeps going. Is this the end now of the DLC, or is there still more? It is not the end. We are going to continue going, well, except for Bill. <laughs> Bill. Bill is dead. Bill is done. So, But everybody else, who knows what's next? Maybe there'll be a new survivor joining the cast, right? Well, maybe. All right, well, thanks, chat. And if you guys want to see all that new footage of Portal 2 again in high definition, head on over right now to GameTrailers.com. For all to GT, I'm Jeff Keeley. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.